Hello, Ken Spriggs here with an unboxing and a review of the brand new model from Monarch Models of the classic Fly from the uh, 1950s film, The Fly, starring David Hedison and uh, Vincent Price, one of my favorite uh, sci-fi slash horror monster movies that are classic. Um, certainly redone later with Jeff Goldblum in, in, in its own right. It was a really great redo of the movie, but I always love the classic. I love the concepts and the idea of, uh, of somebody inventing a transporter and actually having, you know, side effects like that that could happen. This was before Star Trek had come up with the transporter and they might have even borrowed it from there. Who knows? But I've always loved this model. Um, and I believe it was originally supposed to come out several years ago by Mobius, if I recall correctly. Uh, and then it just went into limbo for a long time. I don't know if this is the same original design or if they had started some molds and maybe Monarch bought them. I don't know the story about it. But, um, but it was announced about two years ago that Monarch was making one and they finally released it. Got mine in the mail today from Cult TV Man. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this awesome model. All right, so I just got in the mail today from Cult TV Man, the brand new model from Monarch Models of the Fly from the classic 1950s movie film with David Hedison and Vincent Price. I've been waiting for this model for quite a while. Uh, I believe that it was originally supposed to be coming out from Mobius. I'm almost certain that it was. I recall back several years ago them talking about it. I don't know if this is the same molds or the same beginning or if this came over to Monarch. I'm really not sure. But I know about a year or so ago or more, they started talking about making it and, uh, and finally released it. So really, really cool. Really excited about this kit. I love the classic monsters, and uh, and the fly was always one of my favorites. I always loved that that film. Uh, so many clever parts to it. The whole idea of of a transporter, which later became popular in Star Trek. The idea of a monster, and the science gone bad, and uh, him turning into the monster. I always thought that was great, and I think it was well done. It was always well done. Sorry, my camera was shaking a little bit there. But let's take a look at the box. So the box is a little bit different. It didn't have any um, any cellophane on it. It had a little, I don't know if you can see it right there. It had a little piece of plastic sealing it on the one edge that you, that you put onto it. And then the whole thing opens up, and I'll show you in a minute. The back of it shows some of their other kits that they make, including the fly. But you got Sinbad, Nosferatu, Gorgo. Castle Mare or something like that. King Kong, of course. Um, and then the sides just have the same image of the character, of the fly. All right. I like the cover. It's really cool. Um, it doesn't show the whole design of the model, how it looks built with the display that it comes with. But that's fine. It's cool. I really like the colors and how it looks. So, and then the box itself opens up sort of like on a hinge. So it's attached on the back. That's why they only had to have the, the sticker on the one side. They didn't have to have it over on the whole thing. So, all right. So let me go ahead and take all these out and we'll take a look at the different parts inside. All right, so the model is made up of five different sprues. Uh, and they are different colors. I'm not sure if there's a reason for them being molded in different colors or not, if it makes a difference, but uh, we'll take a look at those. Uh, there are no clear parts. There are no decals, of course, nothing like that in this. It's just a straightforward uh, figure with a base and some extra parts, which is kind of cool. So let me um, open this up. each one all right so this first one here obviously has the two uh, sets of legs the pants and it has the front of the upper torso the part of the shirt and the jacket 
This is molded in kind of an orange. All right. Open up the next one. This one is also molded in orange. And you have a, his, his lab coat. You have his arms, two parts of each of those. You have his shoes. And I like this design. They had the same design with the Invisible Man where the sole of the shoes goes underneath so you don't have a seam in the actual shoe which is kind of cool. Those just go together. So I like that. So pretty straightforward. Oops, sorry. Then we have the next brew and it's in a blue color. It's kind of cool. Again, I don't know if there's any particular logic behind it. it doesn't seem to be. Obviously you're gonna paint it. And I'll, I'll definitely be looking at the, at the film, going over it again, and uh, kind of getting some ideas for the colors. Doesn't have to be totally accurate. So, all right, you've got um, his head, part of his head, the fly head, his human hand, the fly hands, little feelers, other little spiky pieces. A little nameplate for the fly. These other parts here. These might be the eyes. I'm not quite sure. I believe these are parts of... I'll show you when we get the instructions. There's some cool little add-ons which actually come from the original fly and the return of the fly. Where you have the spider in the web with the little... The little fly crying for help, which is always super creepy. You have a, a hamster, I believe, or a possum or something that had some human hands that um, was from the second film. The second film wasn't as good as the first one. I'd never really liked it as much. But you've got the, where did I see that at? There's this little spider here. Oh, you got little teeny hands. <laughs> I believe these little teeny hands are for the, for the, whatever that is, possum guy, which is creepy. Some of the little teeny parts. We'll look at the instructions and get an idea of what goes with it. Not sure what that is. A bunch of little parts, little feelers, little whiskers. I might try to do something with a, some some fake hair like from a brush or something makes his face look more bristly and hairy you know part of his machine that's broken that goes with it as well so pretty cool all right then you have the parts for the base And it's pretty basic. You have some wooden floor with some broken pieces off of it. it looks like a book. An axe. Yeah, because he used an axe to break up his machine towards the end. Some other parts of the controls, I think. That sort of thing. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's his tie, I think. Yeah, his tie. His tie is kind of sticking out like it's in an action pose and it's flying up in the air, so that's kind of cool. And that's in a red. All right. And then we have the last one. Okay. 
and there's the controls I think these are just like the wall panels for the sides of it you have the front little spider web I think this is where you're supposed to put the little little spider going after the fly with the human head on it <laughs> all right and also in some red so all right so pretty straightforward pretty cool all right, so then let's just look at the directions, the instructions. All right, so here are the instructions. So it folds up, and then you have basically it's just a one fold out it's for four pages. And on the back, you have a little diagram of how it goes together. Some ideas for painting it. Pretty cool pose. I like how they have that posed and this tie sticking out and some extra little things from the films, like I said, and about the fly. That's pretty cool. Dr. Delon, Dr. Delombre, that's what his name was. And the power unit. I'm, I'm kind of toying with the idea of just adding a little bit to this. Uh, the actual transporter boxes was like a cabinet with a clear front on it. I might look at that. I could easily build something like that, and maybe have it, maybe having it sitting behind him to just add a little bit to it, possibly some flashing lights. I'm gonna have to look it over and see, watch the film again, but, uh, but that would be pretty cool. But you have the front, which is just a reproduction of the front of the box. And when you open it up, you have the um, the instructions. So let me get a little bit closer on those here a second. Come on. There we go. Oh, that should be good. Okay. So let's kind of go over these a little bit. So... Not too complicated, as you can see. Pretty straightforward. So the first thing they have you do, you just put together the, the basic parts of his body, his legs and his upper torso and his shoes. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and then the coat goes on the back. So you don't have a back of the upper torso. It's a part of, the, of his lab coat. His two arms his tie, you have his right hand, which is a, a human hand still, his claw, which is assembled, and that's kind of cool. So you have the two main parts, you have these other parts sticking out, these other little teeny spiky parts sticking out. And likewise, like I said, I could put some bristles on it because that's what I always kind of remembered from it. It was kind of bristly looking and like hairy looking, like a fly would be, and kind of gross. Then you have the head, you have another front part of the head and the top part here, some little antennae, the um, the little maxillary pulps, as they call them, the labellum. <laughs> These are all little parts that go on his mouth, which look kind of creepy. And in the film, they were kind of quivering, which is always kind of creepy. And when you get that together, you get the head assembly and the claw assembly. So those go together. It's pretty cool. Uh, then over here, it's really tiny, it's hard to see, but you do have the little spider and you have the fly that has a little little tiny human arm and a tiny human head. Looks like that's just one piece. And you, um, and you glue those onto the base. Uh, and then you have, they call him Mr. Snuggles. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Mr. Snuggles. Um, so yeah, he has the little human arms and he's like a, a possum or a guinea pig or something like that. I don't know what it was. But in the second movie, they had put him, they wanted to get rid of this guy, this detective or whatever he was. So they, they um, threw him in the booth on purpose with this animal and they had the two kinds. It was kind of creepy. Both of them were pretty creepy. The first one was a good movie. I really liked it. It was a classic. But the second one was kind of stupid, I think. I didn't like it as much. Um, and then you put together the, the base. So you have the two pieces of the floor, you have the four walls and the controls for the control panel. 
you have this little thing here, which was, I think it's supposed to be damaged. In the film, it, it had electricity pulsing on it, I believe. And there's this piece right here. Um, you have the little fly panel. You have the, um, some other added parts. What do they call these? Well, one's a book that goes on to it. Uh, nameplate, axe on the floor, book, side panel. Huh. I'm not sure what these pieces are supposed to be. They don't really have them numbered. I'm going to have to take a look at that and see. Oh, and it does say that this is in one, one eighth scale as far as the size of it. Oh, and they call this the man fly and the scary spider. That's kind of funny. So you actually do, it says, cement the left wing and the right wing to the tragic man fly. So apparently that gets put together. Uh, cement the tragic man fly to the horrible web on the power unit, which is the web I showed you on the, the front of the power unit. front panel and then it says help me which is always really creepy in the film <laughs> that tiny little creepy voice and he had superimposed David Hedison's head onto this this fly in a web and the creepy spider coming at it that's that's just like indelibly burned into my memory how creepy that scene was uh submit the scary spider to the power unit front panel as well then you assemble the base and you have these different things yeah, these might just be a stack of books. I think that's what that's supposed to be. And that's supposed to go down on the table as well. I guess showing you that he, throughout the movie, I remember now, he did sort of have these, these his lab manuals that he was using to try to figure out where he had gone wrong and how he could turn himself back and going over them over and over again, trying to help it, trying to resolve it. So, yeah, so when you see on here, yeah, so you have a couple of stacks of books. You have the open book on top. You have the little Mr. Snuggles. You have the axe. You have the little framework. It's kind of hard to see back here behind him. And you have the control panel. And then, of course, the, the, man, the man fly and the spider crawling up towards it. Really cool. Really creepy. Could probably even do something where you could make a your own little web out of something and put that in it. That would be creepy too. We'll see. And of course you put him onto the onto the base. So pretty cool. Oh, it is a guinea pig. Yeah, because it says meticulously crafted and molded in high quality styrene plastic. This dramatic scene will go together like a breeze and offer endless opportunities for painting mayhem and merriment. Includes lab base, damaged equipment, rampaging axe, scientific books, a shocking human guinea pig hybrid creature. And what's that? A fly with the head and arm of a man caught in a spider's web, ready to become a meal for the advancing arachnid. It's the most bizarre kit monarch has ever created. So pretty cool. I really like it a lot. Really happy to get this model. I've been wanting this for quite a while, like I said. And, um... And glad that they finally brought it out. So uh, definitely check it out. I got mine from Colt TV Man. Uh, he did say that he got a limited supply in it at first, but he's getting some more in within the next like week or 10 days and be able to um, be selling that as well. So go ahead and take a look for that out there. And I'm sure other retailers online are selling it as well. Maybe your local hobby shop. But uh, definitely a really sweet kit and I'll be happy to build this at some point here in the future. All right, so now that I've looked at the instructions, one more thing I wanted to show you so I can get a better idea of what these are supposed to be. So there's the, the spider that's going after the, the man fly. There's the man fly, pretty creepy looking. <laughs> you can see he has a human arm on the left side. It's supposed to be fly legs, his little head. Kind of some some features on his face. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Yeah, 
Not too bad, but really creepy, of course. There's the bottom of them. And then you have the, um, here's the two fly wings that you put onto the back of the man fly. And then, so this is a guinea pig. So there's two parts of them. So he actually has the front, where are those? Yeah, he has his front arms, human arms, coming out the front. And you have his little guinea pig feet coming out the back. And I remember in the second film, The Return of the Fly, they had superimposed, they showed this guinea pig and they superimposed two human arms coming out of the front to make it look really creepy. And that was how they kind of did that effect. They didn't put as much into the budget in the second one, I don't think, because they did the first one. So, all right. But, uh, and these are the eyes, which are going to be really like a glossy, shiny black for that. So, okay. So definitely a lot of creepy effects and a lot of creepy elements in this kit, for sure. All right. So really great kit from Monarch Models uh, from the classic film, The Fly, one of my favorite science fiction horror movies from back in the 1950s definitely loved that film growing up as a kid a lot of really uh, interesting ideas and some really creepy images burned into your brain from it for sure and it's obviously inspired a lot of other films uh, especially the sequel with jeff goldblum uh, so i'll be excited to build this somewhere down the road uh, and put it together and and probably do a little bit of modification on it so um, if you're interested in looking for this kit, uh, it should be starting to be available now. Uh, check out Cult TV Man. I will put a link in the description. Uh, they did say they had a limited supply at first, but they're getting more in in about a week to 10 days. So they should definitely have some of those. Uh, or check your local model shop and pick up this great model. Uh, definitely a must have. And it'll definitely add into my other ones like the Invisible Man and uh, my classic thing from another world and my John Carpenter's a thing uh, in those kind of classic horror monsters, which I do want to do more of, of some of the other ones as well in the future. So, all right. Well, thank you to all my new subscribers and stay tuned.